Hey everyone, welcome to episode number 37. Today we're talking about incorporating your brain into strength training. And my guest is Mehul Parekh of Bridgetown Brain and Body here in Portland, Oregon. You're listening to the Fitlandia podcast with your host and reformed dieter, Krista King. Engage the power of your mind to kick dieting to the curb today. Hey, welcome to this episode of the Fitlandia podcast. I am so excited to introduce my new fitness buddy here in Portland, Oregon, Mehul Parak. Good morning. How morning, are everybody. you? Great. Did I pronounce your name right? Spot on. Awesome, good. Better than I'm, my family does. <laughs> I'm glad I got that. Well, it's such a pleasure to have you. So you tell us how you found me again, because even, even I'm forgetting. It was through the Oregon Entrepreneurs Network. I That's joined right. there about a month, month and a half ago. And I'm starting to look to make some contacts in the Portland area. And all of a sudden, I look for fitness, and there's Fitlandia. <laughs> how can you go wrong with a name like that? Well, thank you. Um, and I was so glad that you just reached out. Because what's really cool is Mehul is the owner of Bridgetown Brain and Body. And if that isn't the mark of Fitlandia, I don't know <laughs> what is. Um, so we decided to collaborate on a podcast to talk about how to incorporate your brain into your strength training workout. And he actually gave me a private session this morning talking about how we connected that to the brain, which was Mm -hmm. like, like no pun intended, but it's perfect. It was mind blowing. (laughs) See what you did there. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So we're going to talk a little bit today about how to really reframe how you think about your strength training, especially for people that are getting started. I know your philosophies are very heavy and injury prevention, Mm -hmm. but also how you're connecting the brain to the body. So that that actually becomes one of your techniques to prevent injury. Is that fair? Absolutely. Awesome. What they're learning more and more now in physical therapy circles, in chiropractic circles, in occupational therapy, osteopathy circles, is that rehabbing injuries cannot just be a bottom-up approach. For example, people who have suffered from strokes or from other major injuries, they've learned that is there's got to be a brain involvement in how you activate muscles. Because when you think about a stroke victim, for example, you think about the fact that maybe they can't move their arm very well. And so the traditional physical therapy methods are, let's get that arm moving. Let's do some exercises there. Let's have them hold something heavy so we stretch that arm out. Even Let's do a Botox injection in there to get things to loosen up a little bit. All well and good, but if the brain doesn't make those changes, then those uh, changes in the physical body aren't going to be permanent. So now you think about the carryover to how we do some of our strength training as well. You can strengthen the muscle all you want. And it's nothing against the way traditional strength training has been done. Mm -hmm. But there's always been a neurological component to it. Now we're starting to quantify that a little bit more. I love that. And I mean, that's what we do at Fitlandia with ending dieting, right? If you don't bring the brain into creating a new neural pathway then you're just going to slip back into an old pattern. So I love that you're talking about strength training and incorporating the brain so it can actually like, you're, you're, you're literally connecting the whole body experience there. So that's great. So, so when Mahula came over this morning, I, um, I was, you know, feeling a little tired, (laughs) full disclosure, (laughs) and I was a little nervous. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I hope I can do this workout. It was, uh, the opposite of what you would think you would experience with a personal trainer. Um, So let's talk a little bit about what you did differently with me than most people get from a personal trainer in like a conventional gym. Well, for starters, you weren't left exhausted at the end of the (laughs) workout. No, I feel very refreshed. I didn't shout any platitudes like no pain, no gain, or suck it up buttercup or any of that. Oh, that's a good one. (laughs) I left my drill sergeant outfit at home today. Yep. Uh, the, The main concern I have with how strength training and how training in general is executed in gyms is people go in and just give people workouts. It's a one-off, let me crush you for 45 minutes to an hour and out you go. There's no long-term progression thought of in it. There's no planning about how this affects the rest of your day. Because for the majority of us, what we do in the gym is supposed to have a carryover effect to how we function in the rest of the day. It's not supposed to be the end of it. Right. There's no point to a workout <laughs> if you can't get up and actually do things afterwards. So who of you out there is so excited right now to hear that that whole no pain, no gain really doesn't, it doesn't hold water anymore? Yeah, and, and the funny thing is, is that, look, we all who train, we like to train hard sometimes. And I still have days where when I'm pushing up a barbell squat, 
I want to have that maximal lift. I want to say, all right, I want to break a personal record every single time I go into the gym. That said, I do have an understanding of where my body is. And I say, all right, right. maybe today's not that day. Right. Or if I'm going to do it here, maybe the other three or four lifts have to take a back seat today. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Um, that tip that you just gave because... Um, and I don't know if you incorporate any Ayurvedic uh, principles in it, but I am a pitta dosha, which means like I love a good hard workout. Mm -hmm. And I think that's great that even though that's like my tendency and that feels really good and that can amp me up, that I still need to be super respectful of my body. Right. And you were amazing at incorporating the things that I was experiencing today. So just to share some things going on in my own body is I'm having some nerve issues in my hand my right hand and my left ankle. And so you were really mindful about um, crafting a fitness plan for me that really honored and respected the healing process of right. that. Right, absolutely. Yeah. I think a, one of the things I look for in a mark of a good trainer, and shameless plug for it, if you go to our website, bridgetownbrainandbody.com, there's a free ebook you can download called Shattered that talks about some of the reasons that training stalls out and why we mm. hit plateaus and how you break through them. And... At the blog is where I talk about some of my issues with what I see in training. And one of the things is that having a plan is a must. You have to go into a session. If your trainer is ad-libbing and just making yourself up on the fly, that's the sign you need to get away from them. At the oh, same yeah. time, <laughs> there needs to be some flexibility and say, you're hurting today. Yeah. Your energy is not quite where it needs to be. Let's meet you where you are. Yes. I love that. <laughs> I love mm -hmm. that. Because then people are going to enjoy their exercise. They're going right. to enjoy the workout. Mm -hmm. And they're going to get the benefits from it and want to come back and do it again. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, we talk a lot about in Fitlandia for people that are transitioning off that yo-yo dieting cycle and moving into more of a permanent lifestyle is this, you know, what happens when I get injured? And they lose a lot of momentum and motivation. That's where the mind zoning can help you like stay on a healthy path. There's still so many things that you can do with other parts of your body or even just like focusing really well on your food and moving and stretching and, and gentle exercises where you can. But you know, I love this, like, let's prevent injury so you don't have to worry about that. Absolutely. And look, injury does happen. Right. It's, it's, it's inevitable. <laughs> we were talking about injuries. I think I've sprained my right ankle 10 times over the years. I had access where I've blown out both of my elbows, my, oh, wow. my knees, my neck, everything. It's all been beaten up. Um, they're a part of life, but you don't want your training to be the source of those injuries if you can possibly avoid it. This is supposed to help you work around those injuries and prevent them. This is not supposed to be the thing that injures you. Right. So if somebody isn't working with like a brain body connecting specialist, mm -hmm. what are some like basic things they can keep in mind that's going to help engage their brain while they're doing their strength training with someone that might not have these tools and techniques? Well, let's talk about kind of from a, a broad overarching perspective first and why we keep our workouts short. The longest workout I ever recommend for anybody with weights is about 46 minutes. Okay. There's been research that shows that after about an hour at the most, that's when you leave that true muscle building state and you really get into a true catabolic breakdown of oh, muscle okay. and, and of tissue. Beyond well, that, that's good news yeah. for everyone that's short on time. <laughs> Absolutely. Beyond, beyond that, just the motivation. Just, yeah, I mean, yeah. How often do you feel like at the end of that workout, you start to lose a little bit of focus? You start to lose a little bit of direction? Sure. Additionally, I think keeping the workout shorter and accomplishing that goal accomplishes that dopaminergic rush. Our brains, when we accomplish things, we get a huge yeah. boost of dopamine. So if you're battling addiction in other ways, a short workout that you just put on your list 20 minutes and you get it done, <sighs> humongous effect. Okay, I know we're talking about practical tips people can do on their own, but I, I do want to stop and talk about this because that's really a passion of mine is overcoming addiction, whether it's food addiction, whether it's a reliance on alcohol, refined carb sugar, whatever it is. So you just heard it. Like this is what, and this is one of the greatest techniques to elevate your mood too and prevent depression or help you um, get through a depressive episode is really these bursts of exercise that are going to give your brain that right. nice boost. So I, I hated to cut you off, <laughs> no, but no, no, it's right. really yeah. important that yeah. this this is so pow it's such a powerful technique. In twenty, and he said twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's even to the point now where I've been experimenting with 
a daily 25 minute workout as opposed to three times a week heavy weights which is yeah. for most people building strength that's what I recommend is a three to four time a week thing I think it works the best yeah. okay but to try to develop some new habits in my brain I've been experimenting with every day the same four lifts similar to what we did today actually the big okay. four um, a pushing pulling upper body a squat and then a hinge like a deadlift pattern those same four lifts every single day for it's going to be between 60 and 90 days we're going to see depending on how my schedule looks where it ends I think I've missed one so far and okay. I've beat myself up for that <laughs> um, don't beat yourself uh, you know how it is. <laughs> and, and, and the goal is again keep it short and it's talked about a lot in strength training actually the Russians have done this for ages and if you're into kettlebell training at all there's a great coach named Pavel Satsulin who's all about two by five every day Greasing the groove, they call it. Okay, and it's Ooh. about and yeah, it's it's a great phrase, isn't it? I love kettlebells. Yeah. It's <laughs> and, he, and he's and he's all about just the same two or three lifts to build true strength. He's not about okay. building huge muscle; yeah, it's yeah. about strength. Yeah, yeah. Which that in it in and of itself is so empowering for people that are on a weight loss journey that are getting that are getting their healthy back, that are just improving their overall diet. But when you strength train. Hmm. Man, does that motivate. It, it does for me anyhow. Mm-hmm. I'd love to hear um, folks' comments about that as they're listening to the show. <laughs> okay, so back to that tip about how can we like connect our brain to our body while we're doing our strength training. Sure. Uh, a lot of different ways and little techniques you can use. And the first one, even when you're getting ready for your workout, are you visualizing your workout? Oh. There's been research that shows that if you just even engage in the visualization of a workout, and if you don't do the workout, you'll still get a muscle building benefit from it. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is like right in line with mind zoning, and it's totally like inspiring me. I'm going to be doing a three minute mind zoning series. I'm going to be recording it this summer, and I'm totally going to do one on visualizing your workout. Let's get your brain you know, engage to create that blueprint for your... Absolutely, Oh, yeah. I love this. I mean, yes. I mean, it's what we think about in every walk of life we've been talked about since we were kids. I used to wrestle when I was in high school. And I one of the captains and the coaches of the team always said, visualize your match before you even get out there. Yeah. Have that plan in place. So start with that. From there, think about the range of motion you're working through. Think about, are you moving or are you moving a weight? Moving a weight is great. It's going to build that resistance right there. That, But also moving yourself through space there's a greater neurological effect because you're integrating more and more of knowing where you are in space and one of the great responsibilities of your brain is to keep you oriented well okay make sure you don't fall over and hurt yourself okay so the more you know where you are in space the better you're going to be so like a push-up a mm-hmm. squat. Sure, absolutely. Okay, yeah. those are th- just for everyone to visualize. Mm-hmm. Like you're moving your body in space. You're not using a weight or a resistance band right. to engage. Okay, right. perfect. Additionally, here's another thing to consider if you're really into body recomposition, losing some weight, losing some fat. All that stuff is great. Just changing your workouts up on a regular basis. Just incorporating a new angle, a new yeah. movement. Your central nervous system has to work harder just to get that pattern down. And it's going to burn more sugar when it does it. Oh, awesome. Let, well, that's that's fantastic. So that's probably why there, you get the, the tip. Change your workouts up so your body doesn't mm-hmm. get used to one thing. But here you are connecting it to the central nervous system. Absolutely. That it's actually working harder so it's going to burn more sugar. Absolutely. I love that. And the other thing to remember, when you start a workout plan... If you've never lifted weights before, you've never done resistance training, those first six to eight weeks are the honeymoon period because you're going to see your numbers go through the roof. Right. That's all <laughs> neurological. That's okay. all based on more efficient, re- efficient recruitment oh. of the fibers and your sensory and motor planning systems in your brains knowing, okay, I need to use this muscle and I need to use it in this fashion. And all of a sudden, you're going to get much stronger. Okay. Then after a while, it has a tendency to level off a little bit. And that's where you want to more strategically incorporate things like... One-legged training, one-arm training, okay. new challenges, new right. balance drills that way. Um, making sure the joint moves through a full range of motion that it needs to move through. And make sure the muscle moves through a full range of motion. Okay. And that's where we could use the expertise. And I know Mahul is going to be coming out with some awesome demo videos on his YouTube channel. So mm-hmm. we're going to keep an eye out for that. All right. We're going to wrap up here. Um, but I want to know, are there any other tips that you think, like, if there's one thing everyone walks away from today, this is your number one takeaway. Oh, wow. It's I know. <laughs> I know that's really no tough. No pressure there. Wow. It's really tough. I think that anything else, you have to realize that strength is a skill. 
Okay. And if you think about it from a skill building perspective, it changes the way you structure your workouts. Any other skill you build in life, if you're a musician, for example, if you play your guitar or your piano, do you play it for four hours a day until your hand looks like this? Or do you play it 30 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, 10 minutes a day? Right. So that you're getting the pattern down yeah, there yeah. and you're building that skill in your brain and then in the body as well. Think of strength training or any kind of workout, but particularly strength training that exact same way. That the, it's a short burst of application, the consistent short burst of application that are going to see the most effect. And then also we talked about get over the it has to hurt mentality. Yes. Get over the idea that the more soreness you feel the day after, the better workout it was. Soreness is a horrible indicator for how good a workout is. Oh, uh, that's a that's a fantastic tip. And I'm going to add to that too as we wrap up because you and I are really passionate about the lifestyle versus the immediate quick results. And Mahul and I were talking mm-hmm. about, um, you know, I, I have a member in Fitlandia that is like, I, w- I want to lose two to five pounds a week and really frustrated with her one pound of weight loss a week, which I'm like, that's perfect. That's exactly what you want. And it's really this idea of shifting into you're creating the lifestyle to reach your goals versus let me focus on the goal and not worry about the lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So we talked about that in the strength training too. Like my 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 workout was really, um, it was easy. Right. But I, I know that I was still building strength. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like, oh, like, I, right. Just like you said, like, I'm going to wake up tomorrow feeling really sore. And that's an indication that, yeah, I'm really doing it. I'm reaching my goals. So just encouraging everyone that strength training, and you said at least three times a week? Three to four times a week three is going to be, be the optimal right there. Perfect. Yeah. So strength training three to four times a week and really focusing on healthy nutrition every single day mm-hmm. for life. Not not until you, you, know, the, you shed those 20, 30, 50, 100 pounds that you want. But this is really just a part of how you're becoming you. So I'll leave it on that note. Thank you so much My pleasure. for being on the podcast. And I, I really want to make a really cool announcement too. So Mahul is coming on as one of Fitlandia's expert practitioners. So you're going to see a lot more of his name. You're going to get great content from him. I'm sure we'll get some great uh, video demos that we can post up free on the, on the website. So be sure to subscribe to the Fitlandia YouTube channel. If you just Google Fitlandia on YouTube, You'll find a company over in Europe, but just click one notch (laughs) down and you'll get us and you'll be able to see us and engage with us on there. Um, Be sure to post up your comments on iTunes and in Stitcher and let us know what you got out of today's podcast and what you're going to do differently. So thanks again for joining. Thank you for being our guest today. My pleasure. Thanks, everybody. Take care, everyone. If this is your first time with us, there's loads of ways to get more out of Fitlandia to help you on your fitness journey. First, subscribe to our podcast where we bring you interviews with experts, inspirational stories of transformation, and techniques to help you strengthen your mind to make fitness fun and easy. Be sure to download each episode so you can access them anytime, anywhere. And don't be shy about sharing them with your friends and family to help them too. Also, head over to the Fitlandia website where we're offering up our free recipe ebook called The Type A Fitness Fix. You'll get healthy and easy to make recipes loaded with Fitlandia approved ingredients to support your goals. Sign up today at fitlandiafitness.com.